Hey there, party people, and welcome back to Planet Zoo today with another habitat build. And this is the African penguin habitat. This is again um, inspired by some real life examples. However, I did do some tweaks with it, and you can see this is in the same park as we were going beforehand as well. Um, I'm going to continue this as a small little Africa area, which I'm going to be releasing at the very end. But today's episode will be very interesting, so stick with me. Um, I'm going to talk about this DLC in general. We are going to talk about some giveaways that are going to happen this week so uh, very interesting stuff if you haven't purchased this DLC already um, then we are going to talk about one thing that I'm really not too happy about um, but I'm going to explain a little bit at the very end of today's episode and we are also going to discuss some general things about this channel and so on and so forth so if you guys are interested in a lot of good topics stick with me but first of all and most importantly let's talk about the habitat idea so this is African penguin habitat and the African penguin penguin, also known as the Cape Penguin. Mm or the Southern African penguin, um, is a very much well-known animal when it comes to zoos in general. They have a very um, specific style of habitats um, that you will see in, in many, many zoos uh, across the globe, which is uh, most likely a lot of rock formations, then having this water bottom where you can see them underwater and stuff like that as well, um, and, you know, underwater viewing and so on and so forth. So it's pretty much close to what it is, but it does have a little twist. Um, so this one over here is telling a little story which you will see at the very end um, honestly though at the very beginning I did not want to tell this story because um, I, I thought I keep it smaller but um, it, you know I, I ran into some size problems and then I had the idea to tell a story so the story is basically um, that at the entrance of the habitat so where the keeper is going in we are in a somewhat um, uh, yeah let's say historical older uh, area of southern uh, Africa you know with it some you know some trading uh, could be could be like a little trading outpost or something uh, which is a bit more uh, towards the inland End. so it's not like really on the coast it's it's somewhat on the inland so to say um, but still uh, you know close to a coastal region where we have some some buildings and uh, you know just scaling down Africa quite significantly um, because of the style of the building I wanted to go for um, so this is where you have the entrance so we will have some African styled buildings over there um, that is uh, going to be uh, very interesting to see. I, I mean, I like the building style. I wanted to go for this. It's not like really southern... Um Southern African is more like Morocco, if you want. Um, but again, this, you know, tending always to the south of uh, Africa. So um, all in all, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with, uh, yeah, with the, with the idea. And then, you know, what the habitat will do is actually going to go um, to the uh, coast, so to say, you know. Um, that means that within the habitat, you have a change of, of foliage, a change of uh, rocks and stuff like that. So it, there is a tiny little bit of a story that is going to be told. But again, um, please don't take it like too seriously what I tell about you know which type of buildings and so on it's a bit more loosely inspired because otherwise um, I would have needed to go really deep into southern African architecture and stuff and honestly though I just wanted to build something cool looking um, so it is like a little bit of an African overall story from inland to coast and you can decide what you think is the best uh, area to be in um, so yeah this is the this is the main idea behind this habitat and of course I wanted to provide some cool viewing angles so what you can see over here is that the pathway is going to lead down uh, towards the underwater viewing but you always have an upper hand area in which you can have a nice glimpse inside of the habitat um, and at all points uh, you are able to kind of see where they are going but they still do have some cool privacy at the very end I also give them a little cave uh, in which they can rest and you know just have a good time which also has like a separate um, external ec uh, entrance so to say I imagine I still want to have two or three gates in, in one habitat that would be awesome um, and this viewing gallery over here that you see is going to change a couple of times <laughs> um, simply because I needed to adjust some things but this is something you will see a little bit better in the final um, build so in a couple of minutes we're going to talk about the DLC but before I speak about the DLC I, I wanted to talk about one thing that um, you know, usually I shouldn't talk about this uh, because it doesn't really bother me that much, but it bothers me enough um, in an 
uh, overall way that I still want to tackle this topic. I know this is uh, something I have talked about in the past as well, but it is mostly about my German accent and, and some people will already know the story behind that, but my, many people are new and I haven't been talking about this for a long, long time. So apparently, yes, I'm German. Um, this should not be too surprising to many people since for once it's on my channel information board that you can see that I'm German. Uh, second of all, the name is already giving it away. Uh, you know, um, and the third thing is, yes, of course you can hear that. I'm pretty aware of the fact that I have a German accent. Um, how wouldn't I have it? So I haven't been abroad, you know, I haven't been abroad from, from, from Germany in terms of learning a language other than French. So actually I've been a couple of weeks in Switzerland um, when I was 19 uh, to learn French. Uh, it was really good. I passed my exams in a quite, uh, quite noticeable and great way. Um, but English is something I have been extremely bad at in school. Like, honestly, that was my worst um, subject in school for a long, long time until I had a very good um, uh, lesson uh, from from another person who helped me out. And then um, I, I just kind of fell into the YouTube things um, a couple of years ago when my English still wasn't the greatest. And, you know, I'm learning while I'm doing, and this is this is the thing. And even though I'm speaking it quite a lot, um, English accent-wise, you can only improve when you talk a lot with English-speaking people at the same time. And even though I do speak it a lot in my videos, of course, I don't have the direct the direct discussion, the direct, um, you know, um, connection with some English speaking people. So what I do do is I watch a lot of stuff in English. I uh, try to listen to a lot of uh, English podcasts and English uh, speaking um, uh, audio books and stuff like that, you know, so, so just to get a better understanding of what the pronunciation of some words are. So for example, la last example is um, the wonderful animal in this update, which is the um, uh, meerkat. So a meerkat. So I, I said meerkat, um, but it's actually the meerkat. So, you know, these kind of things, how would I know? It's like I, I read that, my mind does something with it and then translates that into a language. Anyways, the point I'm making is if you guys don't like my accent, that is totally fine, but I can't really do anything about it. And people just tend to come in here and it's mostly about those people who speak German. I don't want to say German people, but German speaking people come in um, and, you know, some of those come in very impolite already, like I hate your accent. Some of them just start by asking if I'm German and then they said, yeah, we can hear it and blah, blah, blah. It's so bad. Fine. You know, I, there was a time where I was really fell uh, well, I really felt bad about it I really had a had a struggle in the evening and I was like hey is your English really that bad you know you I kind of you, you know you take you take that with you and you try to do it but apparently I you know I, <laughs> I I couldn't care less at this point in time simply because um, this channel and you guys most of you 99% of you guys uh, show me um, that the English is at least well enough so you guys can understand me and like the content and honestly I again I love what I do here and I couldn't bother less about these kind of things but I still want to address it because I find this just a fair um, thing to tell I try to improve my English as much as I can. I do it in live streams. We do. We, how many very funny situations have been um, created by this fact, you know? Um, and I always told you, if you have an t a tip how to improve pronunciation of certain things, just put it down in the comments. But it's always like, how do you put that down there? You know, you can help me by putting down some uh, cool ideas to do the pronunciation, as many people do, and I really do appreciate that. And other people, you know, just come in and tell me how bad my accent is. That doesn't help, and that's the most annoying thing. I can't improve upon something like that. How shall I improve when people just say the accent is bad? I mean, I know, but it doesn't change a thing, you know? Either you like it or you hate it, and there you go. I improve over time, and that's fine, I guess. Um, so just to address it, I'm well aware of that, but I still love what I'm doing, and I'm not changing back to German only because um, two of well, 50,000 people um, don't like my accent. Um, I, I guess there's enough content out there um, that you can still enjoy, and I'm also quite aware of the fact that I'm still having a less of an annoying accent um, than many, many other German-speaking people have, um, simply because I, I have been there, you know, and I've been improving over the last couple of years uh, quite significantly. Just listen to one of my first videos here on, on YouTube, you know, that's horrible. I, I just can't listen back to those. They are just horrible. Um, the accent is like 20 times more heavy, and I guess, you know, the more I do it, the better it gets. 
I think. And uh, that's all I want to say about this. It, it should not take more time than this in this video. So, yeah, we're done with this topic. I just wanted to quickly address that. I hope you guys understand. And if not, well, it's fine too, right, I think. And now let's let's continue talking about these buildings. As I said earlier in this episode, this is basically the area where we have the buildings. Um, these are some backstage stuff buildings. Um, you know, very bare bone. I'm I'm not doing crazy stuff. I'm really I'm really going with the vibe of having something thematic, but it's just like very much more or less um, only like a little theme. It's not even like a heavy building. It's just like a um, theme as you have it in some um, some theme parks anyway. So that's the that's the main focus on it. And uh, many zoos do only have that as like a facade and not more than that because um, form goes over function or no function goes over form I guess um, in this in this case and you know you do need to have all the functionalities and stuff in the background like backstage uh, keeper huts and stuff like that so I wanted to keep it simple um, same goes for the plants and the water I try to keep in mind that you have to clean um, these things uh, and and therefore I put some little plant underwater planters in. I actually saw that they are existing and these are a lot more easy to maintain once you have them um, it's more like a little artificial kind of things where they are connected to and then um, they don't don't start to you know make make the water around uh, dirty and stuff so you keep them in they do a little positive thing for your water but not you know they're just more or less like cosmetic so yeah as you can see over here I tried to bring in a little bit more of uh, yeah African feeling um, getting some plants in because these animals uh, do also live on a coastal area where there are some plants so I just put him in and just made it a bit more nice looking and put a webcam in as well so that you can use that webcam and put another one underwater which looks kind of cool to be honest and you've seen that in potentially yesterday's video of um, you know uh, talking about the update 1.6 and the uh, beautiful beautiful Africa pack. Now, let's talk about the giveaway. The giveaway will be on my next live stream, and presumably, and I guess this is also pretty safe, this live stream will be on Friday afternoon from around 5-ish to um, 8 p.m. Central European Summertime on my Twitch channel. So in case you guys are interested in winning some codes, and if you guys are interested to see me live building, I guess we will be in Yosemite um, to make the African penguin habitat again, or maybe Mercat. I'm not sure if I do anything else beforehand. Um, you should put that into your calendars and try to be there, uh, because that's going to be fun, and I'll, I'll be giving away these five codes during the live stream so that's the idea behind this so i really hope not all of you have the pack yet and uh i can wait at least a couple more days to to have the chance to win them so this is it and now this is the perfect segue into into um the other the other part you know that was a very positive part now now we need to talk about the negative part so as much as I love the game, as much as I love whatever they did with this update, it's gorgeous, it's great. There is one thing that I also have been vocalized, uh, I have been very vocal about to Frontier, and I, I said this to them as well, and this goes directly into the diving of smaller animals. I love, don't get me wrong, I love the diving mechanic in this game, I love the fact how they dive, I love how they pulled this off, and it was really worth the wait. However, I don't like the space required and this is a pattern that goes through the entire game but this is very significant if you look at the size of the african penguin and you look at what i do over here making this water bottom even bigger this is just about the minimum size to have at least 10 ish penguins in your habitat and make them dive in a normal way um and this shouldn't be the way. I mean, it, it's good to have the idea to have enough space for them, but they are tiny. They're just tiny and they look completely lost in this insane pool. So I really would love to see an improvement on that end. Um, you know, one solution could be to just do not enlarge the requirement for space for diving when you add another um, you know, individual into the group so that you say, okay, the land requirement is going to increase, but once you have diving, it is set for everyone. It's getting a bit more crowded than in the water, but since not every one of them is diving at all times anyways, um, it's fine. But we will talk about this a bit more in detail now in the real-time part, so if you guys are interested in, in that, just stick with me because in a couple of seconds, we will be seeing each other again or hearing each other again in the real-time part. Alrighty everyone, here we are in the real-time part and let's just continue real quick 
with what I was just talking about. You can see this little fellow over here doing some amazing diving, but as I said, just have a look how gigantic this bottom of water is. And of course, it is just about the depth that it needs. And if I click this one over here now, let me just show you what I meant. Um, so as you can see, now the diving is at 143 um, square meters and 90 square meters is what they need. Also, the, the way of calculating it is a bit weird um, since it really only calculates. You have to imagine like if the water is eight meters uh, deep, it doesn't change anything if it's only four meters deep simply because it only calculates the surface so if you make it deeper or higher it doesn't really make sense you just go with four meters of depth as soon as it you know um, calculates that as the deepest point to make the deep water um, area working and uh, everything else afterwards is not really mattering it, it is always the you know surface and that's one problem because honestly that makes your makes your water volumes way bigger than they should be you can make it just deeper but that, that ju just doesn't work so let's say you make like a vertical tank uh, where they have plenty of space to dive in um, it just doesn't work because it only calculates the surface which doesn't change the deeper you do it um, but you can really nicely tell over here they do dive in a very nice way so it's actually pretty neat um, but again, it is like extremely big and even four of them swimming in here now looks um, as, as if they still have plenty of space. There's also kind of a little area over here which they don't really go to. Um, I might just put the underwater feeder here so that they go there, but I think they just always favor the bigger area to swim in. Um, also, they just seem, I, I mean, I, I don't even know how much space that thing needs, but... Um, this platform over here just never works when I put it down because it needs some greater space, they say, which is kind of a little bit of a pity. Um, but yeah, that's just the way it is, I guess, and we just have to roll with it. And at this point in time, this is, by the way, the finished building. You can see the backside. It's just, as I said, only like a facade. And at this point, we have 16 animals in here. They all seem to have some issues, but yeah, um, the more animals you get in, the more the requirement for the deep swimming area is. And again, it is somewhat big I have to say um, and yeah just to finish up on what I said earlier this is the story that the habitat tells we come from the city over here we go all the way the um, foliage in increases in amount yeah, this is this is more like a deserty we have some you know kind of little desert area with a bit of a just a bit of grass and stuff. It gets a bit more lush. We have some mossy areas in here. We've got a palm tree, an oil palm tree, and then we've got other stuff in here. Um, and once we get to the coast, you can see also the um, the color of uh, the rocks changes. It's getting a bit more lush. We have more palm trees, more more trees in general, and just making this overall um, look a bit more like a coastal area. And we do also have like the beach over here. So all in all, you can see this is the story I wanted to tell. And then they have their little cave in here where they can go and have a chill um, if they need to. So this is not only a habitat that is actually uh, looking good and stuff, but it also works for a zoo. Um, I'm pretty happy that it worked out the way it does and um, I will try to make it down as a downloadable object for you but I can quickly tell you why it is a bit of a struggle um, so if I do show you the outline this is the outline of the habitat and it will not cover in most likely everything so what I will potentially do is I'm going to create like a second habitat which goes all the way around and then you guys just have to relocate the entrance gate but I think this is easier than doing everything else and the pathway construction will obviously a bit more complicated but I guess I'm, you know, I have faith in you guys that you will be able to do this. Before we end this episode, here's a little a glimpse at what I changed yesterday. So the Macad Habitat still had some issues. And so what I did, I built them like a little shelter area. And you can see there is like a little viewing. So in case you guys have downloaded it, you have seen that because I included it already in the download link. But this is now um, also like usable in a... Um, wonderful franchise zoo because beforehand it was a nice habitat but it did not work for franchise now it does just as a little um yeah final final verdict on that so i again i really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i am pretty happy with this habitat it's it's definitely one of my favorite ones i've built so far um i like the story and i hope you guys do too and now i wish all of you a very very good day a special hump day and one last very important call to me there will be another episode of city skylands today so in case you guys want to support me and show some love for this series as well make sure to hit over to this one in in, in about an hour from this video and uh, just you know see if it might be interesting for you um, because I love this series a lot it's a lot of fun to do it um, so would I would love to see you guys over there as well thank you so much for your ongoing support stay safe everyone and I talk to you 
in the next one.